Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss yet another important and very conceptual uh, problem from definite integrals uh, involving the fractional part function or uh, the greatest integer function, right? So here uh, we have an important uh, integral uh, where we have to use a lot of concepts, right? And here I will also uh, use some important properties of definite integrals and the property of fractional part function, right? So let us see how we can uh, solve uh, this integral, right? So here uh, we have to evaluate uh, this integral that is from minus 2 to 2, x raised to 4 and uh, we have the fractional part of x raised to 9, right? So let us start, right? So here uh, what we will do, uh, let us uh, first call this integral as i, right? And here uh, we can take it uh, integral uh, number 1, right? So now to move further, uh, let us uh, uh, first substitute here uh, x is equal to minus y, right? So here uh, we'll start with this substitution and we take x is equal to minus y so it implies that y is equal to minus x right so now if we differentiate both sides with respect to x uh, then we'll get uh, dy is equal to minus dx or dx is equal to minus dy right okay now uh, here x varies from minus 2 to 2 so we have x is equal to minus 2 so y is equal to uh, minus and minus 2 that is plus 2 right and when x is uh, equal to uh, 2 then the value of y can be written as a negative of 2 right so when x varies from minus 2 to 2 then y varies from 2 to minus 2 right so let us now uh, write this integral in terms of y right so now we can write i is equal to uh, 2 to minus 2 and for x raised to 4 we have minus y raised to 4 and here we have uh, minus y raised to uh, 9 and for dx we can now write uh, minus dy right so now we can simplify it so we have 2 raised to minus 2 and minus y raised to 4 is simply y raised to 4 because here the power is uh, um, even and here we have a negative of y raised to 9 the fractional part of uh, uh, minus y raised to 9 and here we have minus uh, dy right so now we can uh, get rid of this negative sign uh, by interchanging these two limits right because we know that a raised um, a to b f of y dy is equal to negative of b to a f of y dy right so by this property we can get rid of this negative sign so now i can be written as minus 2 to 2 we can interchange the limits by removing this negative sign so we have y raised to 4 and here we have minus y raised to 9 and dy, right? So now we can take this integral as integral number 2. So now here we see that this integral and this integral, both the integrals are identical, right? Except here we have the variable x and here we have the uh, variable y right so from uh, uh, another property of definite integrals that is uh, a to b f of x dx can be written as a to b and f of uh, y uh, dy right so we can uh, change the variable so now again replacing y by x this integral 2 can be written as minus 2 to 2 and here we have x raised to 4 and then we have fractional part of minus x raised to 9 and dx, right? So now we have this integral 3. So now what we will do, we'll add integral 1 and 3, right? So when we add integral 1 and 3, uh, we'll get i plus i and here we have minus 2 to 2 x raised to 4 
and fractional part of x raised to 9 dx plus uh, this term that is minus 2 to 2 x raised to 4 and here we have minus x raised to 9 and dx right so now i plus i is simply 2i and here uh, we can take uh, minus 2 to 2 and uh, x raised to 4 and inside the bracket uh, we can now write uh, first this term that is uh, fractional part of x raised to 9 and here uh, we have fractional part of minus x raised to 9 uh, dx right so now uh, we have this important expression so now see uh, here we have this uh, important term right see here we have the term that is fractional part of x raised to 9 plus the fractional part of uh, minus x raised to 9 and see here we have x raised to 9 and here also we have x raised to 9 right so the only difference is that here we have the uh, positive sign and here we have the negative sign right so here comes an important property of fractional part function so here we have one important property of fractional part function so if we have fractional part of p plus fractional part of minus uh, p right then uh, the sum of fractional part of uh, p and uh, uh, fractional part of minus p is always equal to 1 uh, whenever uh, p is not an integer right so p does not belong to the set of integers that is z right and fractional part of p plus fractional part of minus p is equal to 0 uh, whenever uh, p belongs to the set of integers right so here uh, we have this term now if we take p is equal to x raised to 9 right so then uh, this expression is similar to uh, fractional part of p plus uh, fractional part of minus p right so now see if we take this property here right in this integral let us call this uh, integral as integral number 4 so now if uh, x raised to 9 that is fractional part of x raised to 9 plus uh, fractional part of uh, minus x raised to 9 uh, is uh, uh, equal to 0 whenever x raised to 9 belongs to the set of integers right so here uh, let us see if fractional part of x raised to 9 plus a uh, fractional part of minus x raised to 9 is equal to 0 uh, then it implies that x raised to 9 must belong to the set of integers by this property right so then in that case this term is 0 so we have 2i is equal to uh, integral from minus 2 to 2 x raised to 4 and here uh, we have 0 and uh, in that case this entire terms become 0 and i is equal to 0 right so uh, when p belongs to the set of integers then the sum of these two terms must be equal to 0 right so in that case the value of the integral is 0 now uh, let us consider this case so now when we have this case that is when x raised to a 9 is not an integer right so when x raised to 9 is not an integer in that case the fractional part of x raised to 9 plus uh, the fractional part of minus x raised to 9 is equal to 1 right so uh, this will happen when x raised to 9 is not an integer right so in that case the value of this expression this expression is equal to 1 so in this case the integral 4 it becomes 2i is equal to uh, integral from minus 2 to 2 and we have x raised to 4 and the sum of these two terms is 1 right so due to uh, this property 
so now we have uh, a simple integral so i can be written as uh, here half and we have integral from minus 2 to 2 and x raised to 4 uh, dx so now we can easily solve this integral so i is a half and here the integral of x raised to 4 is x raised to 5 over 5 and limits are from minus 2 to 2 and this is 1 over 10 we can take 5 outside and we have x raised to 5 minus uh, here we have the limits minus 2 to 2 so this is 1 over 10 and 2 raised to uh, 5 minus and here we have minus 2 raised to 5 right so this is 1 over 10 and this is 2 raised to 5 plus 2 raised to 5 and this is 1 over 10 times 2 times 2 raised to 5 and this is 2 5s are 10 so we have 2 raised to 5 over 5 and that is equal to uh, 32 over 5 because 2 raised to 5 is 32 right so the value of this integral is equal to 32 over 5 uh, when we apply this case right but when we uh, use uh, this case then the value of this integral is 0 right and here uh, we have one important thing see uh, this integral can also be solved by using this property that is minus a to a and if we have f of x dx then this is equal to 2 times uh, 0 to a f of x dx uh, whenever uh, f of x is even function right so viewers the value of this integral is 32 over 5.